Treasurer John Kennedy, thank you for uh, talking to me today, and uh, congratulations on your announcement. And uh, tell tell me, uh, what's the future? Why should we vote for you for U.S. Senate? Well, you, you need to start, it seems to me, every voter should, um, asking a candidate why he's running. Okay. You know, you'd be surprised how many candidates can't really tell you. Uh, I can only speak for myself, of course, but uh, I, I'm running because I want my country back. I, I mean, I'm really scared that we're losing it. I'm from a little town outside of Baton Rouge called Zachary. My dad and mom were uh, were uh, conservative people. My dad was a small businessman, owned a little lumber yard. My mom was a retired school teacher. Uh, they taught me conservative values, uh, God, country, family. Uh, discipline, hard work, education was very big in my family. And frankly, you know, everybody has their opinion, but I think America's losing those values. Um, here's what I see, Steve, when I look mm -hmm. around. I, I, see, I see too many undeserving people at the top getting special treatment in bailouts. And I see too many undeserving people at the bottom getting handouts and everybody in the middle getting the bill. And sure. we, we can't afford it anymore. Our, okay. our health insurance has gone up. Our automobile insurance has gone up. Our tuition has gone up for our kids. Our uh, taxes have gone up, and uh, something's got to give. And, and what all this means is that uh, uh, our, our kids' generation is at risk of becoming the first in America to be worse off than their parents. Uh, because it's, it really is. It's harder than ever to get ahead, and it's easier than ever to do nothing. Um, and so I'm going to talk a lot about what I consider to be the American dream in this race. Okay. So uh, as I appreciate what you're saying, is more sort of like in the middle. You're concerned more about the middle class. That's your focus, am I correct? No, I'm, 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 I'm concerned about – this is the way I, I, I see things. Uh, values are very important. Values determine choices, and choices determine your future. Um, I did not support the bailout. I do not believe in too big to fail. I do not believe in too big to jail. I think the expansion, the stimulus package, the bailout, whatever you want to call it, mm -hmm. was uh, an extraordinary expansion of power. I don't believe in, ca in, a, in a form of capitalism that is heads I win, uh, tails <laughs> the government bails me out. I don't okay. believe it. I, oh. I'm, I, I believe in, in the business values of Main Street, and, and I think wa Wall Street is supposed to represent the, uh, the best, uh, the heart, if you will, of American capitalism. And, and I do not support what happened in 2008. That's that's what I mean when I talk about special treatment and bailouts. Sure, sure. At, no. at, yeah, go on. At, at the same time, um, I think that uh, I think that free market capitalism has done more to uh, to lift people out of poverty than all the government programs put together. I, I think welfare was intended to be a uh, uh, a, a bridge, not a parking lot, and in too many respects, it's become a parking lot. Sure. Now, uh, without pointing fingers, uh, I mean, obviously, uh, the current administration took over from uh, the uh, uh, former President Bush, and the economy was tubing. So without the bailout, you, uh, one would argue, without the bailout, uh, without the stimulus, uh, who knows where the economy would be going? I'm just wondering how, how you feel about that. I believe I'm a free market guy. Mm -hmm. um, I, I don't. I'm not saying we shouldn't have some regulation, but I think government ought to uh, ought to intervene in in the economy as little as it possibly can. Uh, here's what mm -hmm. I see has happened in the last eight years. Mm -hmm. uh, we had uh, we had the Great Recession of 2008, the worst economic downturn since the Great Depression. We've had the most feeble recovery from a recession in economic history. Um, we've lost two wars. We have seen the stunning rise of China, 
which is eating our lunch and uh, stealing our jobs. This country has been embarrassed by Putin. Uh, we've been rinky dude by Iran. Uh, we've been attacked by terrorists here at home. And the world is on fire with ISIS. Now, who's responsible for that? Ultimately, what's responsible for that are the values chosen by our leadership in Washington. And when I say our leadership, I'm talking about President Obama. I'm talking about Secretary Clinton. And I'm talking about the United States Congress. Okay. They cannot escape blame from this. Sure. So both uh, Democrats and Republicans, am I correct? Absolutely. Sure. Okay. Absolutely. I don't. I don't. I don't support big government, uh, big government Republicans any any more than I support Ritz Carlton Democrats. <laughs> okay. Now some people are saying, "Hey, uh, why are you running for U.S. Senate? We got a major problem here. Two point six billion, uh, seven hundred fifty million just coming up uh, uh, by June thirtieth of this year. Uh, please, John, please uh, stay, stay. We need you." In fact, I'll, do both, Jim, I, I'll yeah. do both jobs. I'm going okay. to be very active in the legislative session. Um, I'm, I'm accustomed to 80 to 100 hour weeks. I'll be very active in the legislative session. Um, but uh, uh, clearly uh, uh, serving in the Senate is something I feel strongly about. Clearly it's the job I want. I'll be mm -hmm. a good United States senator. Um, you know, most the people in Louisiana know me. They know what I stand for. Mm-hmm. Uh, I try not to be rude, but I do speak my mind. Sure. Um, I'm not part of the club in Baton Rouge. I don't want to be. My job is to protect taxpayers, not seek the approval of my political peers, and that's the sure. same attitude I'll take to Washington. Sure. And you're the most popular <laughs> person, uh, uh, elected official uh, by far in the state of Louisiana. But since you speak your mind, I'm going to speak my mind, and please forgive okay. me. But um, oh. what, what, what does concern me is this, okay, we do have a major problem, $2.6 billion. Now, I've heard, you know, you on radio and uh, on Jeff's show, et cetera, and, and talking about cutting, cutting, cutting. And I think everybody agrees with you, uh, you know, we absolutely need to cut. I did some homework the other day, and, I, and uh, my numbers may be off. Um, I asked the governor about this yesterday, mm -hmm. and uh, basically, uh, uh, if we close all the universities, uh, it would be a savings of no more than, say, $800 million. We don't have to close the universities. No, but my, my, point is, my point is, how in the world can we cut ourselves out of this? Yeah, no doubt we're not one cut away from prosperity. No doubt about that. Okay. Well, I'll take but, that can, we can but, but can we really cut? Yes, yes. Yeah. Let me tell you okay. how we we'll do it. Go ahead. We've got 156 special funds, as you know, they're called statutory sure. dedications. Um, I'm not so, saying that all those expenditures are wasteful, but we've got no business spending money on the Polk Salad Festival or the Sunflower Festival when we've got a fiscal fiscal problem like this. The governor needs to eliminate all 156 of those funds. That'll free up, without raising taxes, about $488 million. Now, some of the expenditures we'll probably do anyway, but they'll have to compete as part of the general fund with higher education and health care. Number two, I don't think there's a single reasonable person in the Milky Way who believes we need all 19,000 of our consultants. We just don't. Uh, number three, 22 percent, these aren't my numbers, but the legislative auditor's numbers, 22 mm -hmm. percent of all of the managers in classified service and state government manage one employee. It's undeniable, Steve, that we mm -hmm. have too many generals and not enough foot soldiers. There's savings that can be had there. Number four, last year we had 900,000 visits not my number, PAR's mm -hmm. number, to emergencies paid for, or to emergency rooms paid for by taxpayers um, for non-emergencies by Medicaid patients. Look, we, we just can't afford that anymore. Mm -hmm. We've we got to say do what other states have done and say no. If, if you present in an emergency room and you want to be treated for acne or get a pregnancy test or see if you need glasses, or have a wart removed, or talk to somebody about losing weight, we will treat you under Medicaid, 
but not in an emergency room where it's cost five sure. times more. And if they don't know how to do that, all they got to do is go over to Houston and copy the patient navigator program at Houston's Memorial Hermann Hospital. Now, we just saved, just in those four measures, I think we saved a minimum, a minimum of $500 million and, and okay. more. Okay. So, I, I yeah. have, but, but let me finish my thought. Yeah, I think we have ahead. a moral obligation before we raise taxes on the people of Louisiana to the tune of two and a half to three billion dollars. Right. I think we have a moral obligation to try to get control of our costs. Sure. Now, no, we have not yeah. done that. Mm -hmm. I think everybody would, would agree with that, and I think that's a source, uh, one of the sources of your popularity. No question about that. Five or six hundred million is a far cry, though, from one point nine billion dollars upon the seven hundred fifty million. I, I don't think yeah. it's one point nine billion, and I don't okay. think it's seven hundred fifty million. Okay. I, I think that their numbers are inflated. I think that uh, that one point nine. I'm not saying it's not serious. Sure. But I don't think it's one point nine billion. And I don't think it's 750 million. I think it's more like maybe 1.2, 1.3 billion, and uh, more like uh, two, three, three to 400 million this year, if that much. I understand mm -hmm. politics. I understand trying to put pressure on on universities to lobby the legislature to give tax increase. But mm -hmm. I also know how to know sure. how to to read numbers, and I, I just don't think it's that high. That doesn't mean it's not serious. But I'll tell you this that. I read a letter to the editor today where somebody commented. I thought it was pretty, uh, uh, pretty significant. He said, "You know, this isn't a crisis. This is a habit." Mm -hmm. And and uh, we th they raised taxes last spring, eight hundred million dollars. And we were told right. if we did it, it'll fix everything. It didn't fix everything. Sure, you're not going to fix this on the revenue side. You got to fix it on the spending side. And frankly, you've got to start with Medicaid. Right now, now. Uh, Speaking of last year, if I might, and that is that you know we had uh, uh, with this the session, uh, we as you remember uh, as you mentioned that we basically raised uh, about eight hundred million dollars on the backs of business. Yeah. Uh, right. Whether right. it's from whether it's uh, say reduced uh, tax credits or uh, Steve Wagas pack called the tax or taxes, and uh -huh. that was at a time that was an election year. That right. was. That was a time where you know uh, Republican, Democrat legislators, you know, they're looking at election coming up in just a couple of months later. Now right. we're four years away from election, and I'm just and and we don't have a we don't have a Republican governor, and we have more of a, a Republican, uh, but not not that much different uh, Republican legislature. And I was wondering if we couldn't do it then, how in the world? I'm not saying that we shouldn't, but I'm just saying if we couldn't do it then. And if the numbers actually are worse, as in with oil prices going down, how in the world can we do it now? Well, you know what? That's why everybody was elected, Steve. And, and I'm not just putting all this on the governor. The legislature plays a big role in this, too, sure, as you well sure. know. Under our Constitution, they play a bigger role. But, but, but this is the way I approach it. Does anybody really believe if we pass every one of Governor Edwards' taxes – does anybody really believe that three years from now or four years from now or two years from now they won't be back for more? Number two, has anybody the, – the focus of the governor is on government and its revenue. Who's focusing on the private sector and the people's revenue? He is proposing to raise personal income tax, sales tax, corporate income tax, corporate franchise tax, telephone tax, a new internet tax, cigarette tax, liquor tax, inventory tax, business utility tax, and I probably missed some. I mean, it's breathtaking. Sure, sure. It sure. could very easily tank this economy. We've, we've got two areas right now that are growing. Go, ask Lauren Scott. I've seen his numbers. Uh, only two areas, Baton Rouge and Lake Charles. Everybody else is fat, flat rather, or slowing. They better be careful with this economy. Because mm -hmm. sure, the government's sure. not the only problem, is not the only entity having a problem with, with cash flow. A lot of businesses are as well. One, one less uh, uh, stream of questions, and that is this. Um, and you probably have seen it in the, in the uh, uh, papers, uh, et cetera, and different columns. But 
some people are saying that uh, the governor actually knew about the uh, the, the, the uh, problem that we're having right now with the budget that he should have known or he knew. Uh, others say no. Uh, things really worsened around November uh, with the revenue estimating uh, conference. Um, I'm just wondering, uh, do you believe that that he knew or should have known? I, I don't know. I, okay. I mean, I know I know what I knew. Okay. Uh, number one, uh, this house was on fire even before oil started dropping. Sure. We, we were starting to have problems because. Uh, the prior administration, as you know, spent more than it took in and then used gimmicks to balance the budget. Absolutely. The price of oil has hurt, but it's not the only reason we're in this fix. It, I, I will admit it's a, it's a big part of it, but it's not the only reason. You can't blame this just on the price of oil. Sure. If you think back to, uh, to before oil started dropping, we were having budget problems. Sure, sure. Oil, oil makes up about 20, 30% as I... Yeah. As I appreciate it, in terms of the overall budget uh, yeah. shortfall.